When RuneScape's Fight Caves released, they were the hardest challenge ever. At least, they were supposed to be. This is the story of RuneScape's first fire cape and the cheat used to obtain it. I usually like to start these videos off with a little bit of the content's history, but not much is actually known about the development of the Fight Caves. Prior to their release, Jagex didn't really tell players anything. Today, when an update comes out, players seem to have it all figured out in less than a day. But 2005 was a very different time. Unlike the extremely detailed polls and news posts today with all their GIFs, charts, and eerie bug fixes, glad Jagex fixed this one before Halloween. In 05, you were lucky to get a few sentences. I'm not even kidding. When the fight caves were released, the update post about it was one paragraph long, and it was pretty useless. All it really said was that it was a wave-based minigame with a boss at the end, and if you die, you don't lose your stuff. Players who wanted to attempt the caves on their release day would be doing so almost completely blind. Now, Jagex actually did do behind the scenes news posts for some updates, and the fight caves was in one, but it released the same day as the caves came out. Plus, the only new piece of information in it was that the final boss was a creature named Tiztok Jad. Jad was said to make the cow fight queen, the strongest monster at the time, look a bit imp-like, and that's a boss that players still struggle with today. To make it even harder, most of the items used to complete the caves these days didn't exist back then. Since it was 2005, it's obvious there was no armadillo, blowpipe, or bear gloves, but what a lot of people don't realize is that this update was so early that Ceridome and Bruise didn't exist yet either. It may look like a bottle of but it's an essential food item even Fight Caves veterans use on their runs today. The Ava's Attractor and Accumulator didn't exist either, nor did the Dagonoth Kings, so no Archer's Ring. The list really just goes on and on. So let's talk about what items players did have at their disposal. Things like the Crystal Bow were around, which back then was pretty strong, Ranger Boots existed, Sharks were there, and actually even Super Restores for Prayer existed too. Most important of all was Barrow. Players could use healing melee armor like Guthans and Carols for powerful range attacks. The Amulet of Fury, the strongest melee necklace at the time, had also been released along with the Fight Caves. But there was a slight problem with all this. Almost every piece of gear I just listed was ridiculously expensive. The Fight Caves released on October 4th, 2005, and Barrows had released just five months prior on May 9th. If you wanted a full set of Guthans, you'd be paying at least 9 to 10 mil, which means since you're meleeing, you'd also want an Amulet of Fury, which week of release was at least 5 mil. Toss some Carols in the cart, that's another mil. Ranger Boots, another 500k, you get the point. Around 20 to 25 mil for a full setup, which today might not sound like a lot. Unfortunately to me, that is still a lot. But let's compare these to the prices of rare items from back then. Party hats were anywhere from 30 to 90 mil, Santa hats were 6 mil, and Halloween masks were around 4 to 6. Imagine back in the day going, yes, I finally have a 30 mil bank. Should I spend it all on this useless paper crown or high tier gear for my account? Well, today, Guthans is worth 5 mil, and one party hat could get you a car. Not this one, or anything even close to it, but you could still get something decent. Sometimes in life, you should make the stupid choice. Unless that choice would be to not press the like button. Life lessons aside, you'd need gear more expensive than the game's rarest items, high combat stats, and a lot of game knowledge just to maybe be able to defeat the fight caves. But have you seen RuneScape's player base from back then? Showing your buddy how to escape Draenor Manor was about as good as most of our game knowledge got. It's really no wonder there were so many scams back then. 99% of the player base just did not have the skills or the cash to do the fight caves. Oh, I should also mention, RuneScape's client didn't have any quality of life features yet either. You could only move the camera with arrow keys, could barely see 20 tiles in front of you, and there was no health, prayer, run, or special attack orbs, so you'd be swapping through multiple tabs frequently throughout the fight. Oh, and function keys couldn't switch tabs yet either, so good luck switching a Jad when your hands are so sweaty you could fill a whole lake. 
I should also mention, there was no taking breaks. Today, you can log out at the end of any wave you want, and it'll save your place. Back then, if you logged out, that was it. You'd get kicked from the cave and have to start over. If your mom yells it's time for church, you gotta pray it's not right before Jad. Get no. up and go to no. the bathroom! Uh, yeah, uh, Go to the bathroom! You're shitting yourself! In more ways than one, this was an inferno level challenge, if not harder, and nobody knew what to expect. In fact, nobody even knew completing the caves would reward you with a fire cape. You remember back in the day how players would say something like, oh yeah, there's a dragon in the wilderness that drops max cash, or my brother said you can craft party hats with a needle thread and die. Stuff like that. Well, the fight caves was full of theories like that. My favorite has to be that in order to survive Jad, you would need to be wearing a ring of stone. It had released the same day and was going for millions. Obviously, it must be important, right? Well, no. Equipping one just turns you into a rock, but a lot of people thought you needed it. Honestly, I wouldn't mind seeing that as a real boss mechanic one day. Another funny one is that Jad supposedly had a special attack, and you would know when he used it because he changed colors. To make it even worse, these were the days before YouTube existed, so videos of the Jad fight that could be used to disprove these theories were pretty hard to come across. So about a day after the caves had launched, nobody had beaten them yet, which makes sense. They were ridiculously hard. A player named Impaler99 makes a guide for them and posts it to the tip.it forums. Again, he hadn't completed it, nobody had, but he had a ton of attempts at least. Much like a soup quest guide, this guy had a ton of information, but not all of it was correct. For example, saying Jad's first attack was always range. Jad has three attacks, melee, range, and magic. He can only melee you if you stand next to him. If you're not next to him, he will randomly use either magic or range. If you pray protect from magic when he uses his magic attack, you take no damage. Same goes for using the correct prayer on melee and range. If you mess up and don't use the right prayer, he can easily kill you in just one shot. So many players followed this guide and met their dooms pretty fast. Everyone still clearly had no idea what they were doing. But just 38 minutes after the guide was posted, someone named Krasaki posted a picture and gif of his character wearing a fire cape. Which, if you haven't noticed already, for some reason had a more squarish shape inside the menu, even though it looked normal on the character. As weird as it may seem, this is just how the fire cape looked back then. The inventory model was later changed to the model we have today, but not before, in classic Jagex fashion, they accidentally flipped it upside down for a week. Anyway, upon further inspection, this was Krasaki's only post to the tip.it forums ever. Who was this mysterious guy, and how did he defeat the caves and get his cape? As for who he was, nobody really knows. The most I could dig up about him is that he was in a clan called Imperial Forces. Despite being the highest level member by a long shot, he wasn't very high up on the clan's totem pole. This clan also had dozens of wars with other clans, all documented on YouTube, and I couldn't find his username in any of them. But how did he get his fire cape? Well, if we scroll down a bit, Impaler99, the guide's creator, responded to a comment saying that Krasaki actually got the cape using a safe spot. Now, the use of safe spots is a common technique in the fight caves. There are some areas where monsters can't reach you, but you can reach them. But this wasn't an ordinary safe spot. Krasaki had found a safe spot for the final boss, Jad. Impaler99 goes on to say that luckily, Jagex had patched the safe spot after Krasaki got the cape. But just two hours later, returned to the post to say that someone, presumably Krasaki, told him that the safe spot did still work. They were right, and Impaler finally got his first fire cape using it. So you're in for a treat. After getting the cape, Impaler updated the guide with screenshots of how the safe spot worked, and it's pretty cool. So you'd want to start the final wave standing north of Italy Rock. For those wondering, it's called that because it looks like Italy. 
So you start there with Prey Mage on, even though the guide said earlier that Jad always starts with range. And as soon as Jad spawns, run over to him and attack him. After which you'd run to this spot east of Dragon Rock. For some reason, Jad would get stuck right here. You could turn off your prayers and literally just AFK. Even when Jad's healer spawned, you could just switch your crossbow to long range, kill them and go back to Jad. Just like that, RuneScape's hardest boss was transformed from a ferocious lava monster that could one hit you into a three IQ frog made of red rocks. This method really opened the floodgates too. Reading through all of the comments on this thread, most of them are about how it's too hard and they failed, but a lot of those who did manage to complete it used the safe spot. Even a few days after the cave's launch, some people theorized that nobody had gotten the cape yet without using the glitch. It was to the point where if someone was wearing a fire cape, sometimes players would harass them and accuse them of using the safe spot. But this safe spot wasn't the only thing Jagex had to worry about. Players reported issues like the range monster not using its range attacks and just running up to you and meleeing you, the meleeers respawning non-stop every time you killed one, making it impossible to progress, and even Jad just wandering around the caves aimlessly if you ran too far away from him. So about a week or so after the fight caves launched, Jagex introduced a patch to fix all the previously mentioned issues, and most most importantly, the safe spot. But what about Krasaki and everyone who got a cape using the safe spot? Well, Jagex didn't exactly have the tools to keep track of who used the safe spot and who didn't, so nobody had their capes removed. Now, I already mentioned earlier that Krasaki only ever had one post on the tip.it forums, but it wouldn't be the last we heard of him. In February of 2006, the Chaos Elemental boss was added to the game, and along with it, the then elusive Dragon Dragon Two Hand Sword. That same day, someone posted an image of another player in Edgeville who had received one as a drop. And who would have guessed, it was Krasaki. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love the one I did about the Fight Cave sequel, The Inferno. It actually used to kinda suck before Jagex turned it around. Check it out on the right, or a video from my second channel on the left.